Are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> oh my god, I need to get insurance on me. Hello brains. I was diagnosed when I was 12 and there were definitely signs that I had ADHD before 12, but nobody really noticed. I decided to reach out to my community on Twitter and ask what are some signs that you had ADHD that everyone missed? For this video, I partnered with Understood to share their new tool, Take Note. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. I haven't read through any of these yet. I'm about to for the first time and uh, <laughs> you'll get to see my reaction live. Extremely sketchy executive function that I use time consuming and labor intensive workarounds to manage. Complete inability to focus on one thing at a time unless hyper focus is kicked in and then I can only focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, there's this um, misconception around ADHD that it is an attention deficit when it's really about attention regulation. Sometimes we are paying attention to too many things and sometimes we're paying too much attention to one thing. There's a lot of parents that might think that their child doesn't have ADHD because like, well, yeah, he doesn't, you know, he can't focus on homework, but like he can totally focus on video games. Well, those, those video games, he's maybe getting into hyper-focus. He's able to focus on this better because they're, they're holding his attention better or her attention better um, than the homework is. Homework is boring. Things that are exciting are gonna engage our brains better and we're gonna be able to hyper-focus on them. I literally tried to describe my juggle with long-term projects to parents and teachers as lack of depth perception. No, 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 no. Just what? Struggle. What did I say? Juggle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. One of the one of the things that sh that was a sign for me that I had ADHD that everyone missed is how often I made careless mistakes. And I say careless in quotes because it's not that I didn't care. It's that they seemed like careless mistakes, but really I was just moving too quickly. Let's do that again. I literally tried to describe my struggle with long term projects to parents and teachers as lack of depth perception in the dimension of time. ADHDers are what Dr. Russell Barkley tends to refer to as time blind we have a harder time sensing time in the same way that other people do. And we may not realize how much time has passed, but because I was a gifted kid and my brother was more obviously hyperactive, I never was tested until the military. So that happens a lot. If you have ADHD and you're also gifted, there's a term for that, it's called twice exceptional. And it's not like it actually balances each other out. We need support in both. Gifted children need to be challenged in a certain way. And those with ADHD need a certain kind of support. But what, what often happens is we end up looking like an average student or like we're doing fine when really, because we're gifted, we should be performing better than we are. And that's when we start to hear things like, you have so much potential, you should just try harder as if it's a moral failing that we're not living up to our giftedness instead of it's ADHD. Reading in a corner as a child rather than participating in conversation with extended family. Oh, yes, yes, okay. Only recently real realized I must have been bored because the conversation rarely engaged or included me. Quiet reading was considered extremely rude. I was the sullen, sulky child. Yeah, that one hits. Um, <laughs> that was me. Like I, I was the kid who walked around with a book everywhere I went. And I, I knew that it helped protect me from having to socialize. And oftentimes I felt awkward socially. But yeah, that is part of it. Yeah, reading in a corner as a child like is not something that would in and of itself seemed like an issue, but in combination with a lot of other things, it absolutely was one of the signs that I was not fitting in with my peers, that there was some, some sort of disconnect there. I always thought people hated me. Always switching up friend groups. Irritable and hard time engaging in social things because I can't pay attention long enough. Oh, and spending habits. Even used all my money on other people. Yeah, there's a lot to it. Um, ADHD years tend to be more prone to rejection sensitivity, uh, which I talk about in this episode. Switching up friend groups. Yeah, a lot of us felt, I think like we kind of sort of fit into a lot of groups, but not really fit with any of them. And that seems to be a really common thing. I like to think of it as like, we're not flowers, we're bumblebees. Like we pollinate, like we bring we bring th things from one group to another, we bring things from one job to another. And there's something kind of cool about that, but it can be a little bit lonely and isolating too. Some of these are uh, making me feel things. Executive dysfunction. My mom used to go on and on with, if you would just do it, why are you so stubborn when I literally couldn't force myself? If I had help, I was fine, but no one wanted to help me. It's even worse as an adult. I really hope I get proper help soon. Eh, yeah. 
ADHD comes with a lot of invisible barriers and they're often invisible even to us. Like we don't understand what it is that we're struggling with. And so it's often true that we take on the explanations that others give us like, oh, we must be stubborn or we must be lazy or we must be irresponsible. We must not care. All these things get repeated to us so often that we start to believe them because we don't have a better explanation for it because we're kids. Like how are we supposed to know how other people's brains work and why this is so hard for us? But a lot of the time, what it looks like from the outside is very different from what's happening on the inside. And if you can take anything away from this video, I hope it's that that it's so easy to jump to conclusions about why somebody's behaving a certain way or attribute it to being stubborn or misbehaving or not caring when a lot of times like we're trying, we're trying so, so hard and we just don't have the skills yet. We don't have the executive function to do it. Hmm, maybe going to the bathroom only when I'm about to burst. I hyperfocus and my brain ignores the cues until it can't anymore and only then do I run to the bathroom only once it's urgent enough. So many close calls. This is parallel to how I treat tasks and deadlines. This is parallel how to, to how a lot of us uh, treat our gas tanks. Um, when things are urgent is often when that need kicks in or we even become aware of it. It's like it doesn't even land on our radar until then. I don't know, like we're very now or not now. Things are now or not now. And if they're not now, they'll probably never be now. Um, I'm trying to like reframe that for myself. It's like not now is future now. Like that does need to land on my plate at some point. Um, going to the bathroom is important. Mornings were absolute hell. Still are. I was a disorganized space ball. Couldn't keep track of my work or pay attention. Sing teachers singled me out as a bad example. Half the time I didn't realize they were yelling at me because my mind was literally off in outer space somewhere. This makes me sad because I feel like it's still treated as a moral defect if we get distracted. And it's not a moral defect. Getting distracted is not a moral defect. It is a result of how our brains work and that is not our fault. Any other condition, not managing our symptoms perfectly would not be something that would be considered a moral failing. But with ADHD, it, it is. Like if, <laughs> I, yeah, this, this gets to me. Um, I need a minute on this because I, for the most part, I don't get angry on the channel. And when I get sad, like, I get, I get sad. The thing that I want most from the world is for people to stop being yelled at for things that they struggle with, that they're trying not to struggle with. Um, the thing that bothers me about it is because now we're piling shame on top of the, the struggle that already exists. And so now our burden's a little bit heavier because we're not only having trouble focusing, now we're having to carry the guilt and shame of having trouble focusing and being the bad example or the bad kid. And that's not fair. It's not. Being super enthusiastic about DMing a D&D game only to very suddenly lose any and all interest just before we start a game, like literally at the table about to start and just, I can't do this, sorry, let's do this other random thing I'm suddenly now interested in. <laughs> I would crack up so hard if I went to somebody's D&D game like already with my character sheet and everything trying to remember what happened last session because I was distracted and didn't write it down and then suddenly the DM's like you know what we're we're gonna play paintball like that's what's happening now I would crack up that's like there's there it's probably like a huge social faux pas but I would get such a kick out of it personally putting hand up to answer questions at school without knowing the answer or before the question was finished literally forgot forgetting anything that wasn't attached to me as a kid people saying it's hard to follow conversations with, with me sometimes as it jumps all over the place yeah that's a really good one um conversations jumping all over the place from topic to topic um sometimes our hyperactivity isn't physical it's not external it's internal it's talking a mile a minute it's thinking about this and then ooh about that about this and then this and this and this i mean there's a reason like my editors have to edit my videos down and there are these jump cuts it's because i yeah conversation goes everywhere chronically messy desk at school and at home messy school bag nothing was ever neat and prim and proper my treat my teacher wrote great content but why so extremely messy on my final creative writing paper in high school always lost my school supplies my notebooks everything I, I did well in school. A, a lot of ADHDers actually do fine in school. They're not behavioral issues, but that extreme level of disorganization is a really good sign that something's going on. And it's easier to laugh at, it's funny, it's 
you know, it's it's easy to joke about and not take seriously. There's even the you know the stereotype of like the I don't know the gifted eccentric like professor with like papers everywhere and there's something almost socially acceptable about it but the truth is it like gets in our way so much there's so much work that I've done and have to do again just because I can't find it or things that I have to rebuy because I don't know where I put them those organizational challenges are like cute and funny when you when you're like five but when you're 25 and you like realize that you can't get a job because you forgot to show the fix it ticket to the police officer and so now like you can't get this company car job thing like it's not cute anymore and it's not funny anymore it's a real struggle it has profound effects like I want to be really clear that even the symptoms of ADHD that don't seem like that big of a deal to others can have an incredible impact on our lives in terms of how it spirals losing this leads to losing that leads to losing a job leads to now your partnership is falling apart because like you're not working and like it's just it compounds I don't know even where I'm going with that it's just Ah, get support, like support your kids. ADHD is a big deal. It's a bigger deal than most people realize. The truth is ADHD is often hard to recognize. Thankfully, organizations like Understood are working to make it easier. If you're not familiar with Understood, it's a nonprofit organization that supports those with ADHD and learning differences like dyslexia and dyscalculia through education, awareness, and community. They have an incredible website with a ton of information about these conditions and a new tool to help parents figure out if their child's struggles might be due to ADHD or learning differences so we can get the support we need sooner and thrive. The tool is called Take Note. It's free and it guides parents step-by-step -step through the process. Notice your child's behavior, observe it over time, talk to people who interact with your child, and then engage with your child. I've been exploring the tool myself and I love that there are explanations and resources for each step. Observe has an interactive page where you can input what your child has difficulties with and explore articles based on that. And they can even send you a tracker to help observe patterns over time, which is so important because when taken individually, my struggles didn't seem like a big deal, but the frequency with which I struggled with them was. If you wanna learn more, check out their tool at u.org slash howtoADHD and let's take note. I hope you found some of this relatable, useful, funny, um, inspiring, I don't know. Thank you to my brain advocates and all my Patreon brains for allowing me to do content like this so that the next generation can get the support that they need. Let me know in the description below what the signs were that you had ADHD that nobody noticed. Now we know better what to look out for, so hopefully people get the support they need a little bit sooner. Like, subscribe, click all the things, and I will see you next video. Bye brains.